By the end, we should be able to calculate the hydrostatic pressure and thrust in the system and calculate the center of pressure. Let's start by looking at hydrostatic pressure, which is due to the weight of the water above. The equation for it is given by hydrostatic pressure equals density times gravity times height. And the short form is P equals rho GH, where P stands for hydrostatic pressure, rho stands for density, G stands for gravity, and H stands for height. The units are meters for height. Gravity is measured in newtons per kilogram. Density is measured in kilograms per meter cubed. And pressure is measured in newtons per meter squared. Another unit for that is also pascals. Now let's take an object and submerge it in a beaker of water. And it has a height, h, from the surface level of the water. The density of the water is rho, and gravity, we know, is 9.8, so in newtons per kilogram. And this object is going to experience a pressure, hydrostatic pressure, according to this equation. So we have the density of water multiplied by gravity, which is 9.8, times the height that it is submerged. So if we take another object and submerge it further, greater height, let's call it H2, is going to be a greater pressure. Okay, it's going to be greater than the one before, because if we increase the height, gravity is a constant, density is a constant, so the only thing that can change is the pressure. So the pressure is going to increase. Another important point to know is that if we take an object and submerge it under the water with a height h, then the pressure exerted upon that is not dependent upon the area. For example, if we submerge it in a beaker of water, or if we submerge it in a river, it doesn't make a difference unless the height changes. If the height is the same, then pressure experienced is going to be the same. Next, we can look at calculating the average pressure. So from the equation before, we worked out the pressure at any point, And now the average pressure exerted is equal to the density times the gravity times the average height. So if we look at the top, there's no weight because there's no water from, from above. So the pressure at the top is going to be zero. And at the bottom, pressure is going to be max. So if we add up the pressures and divide it by 2, it will give us a average pressure. And since P0 is 0, we can write pressure average is equal to the maximum pressure divided by 2. And since gravity and density are a constant, then the only variable that changes is the height. So the height for average pressure is going to be h over 2. And we can label this as x. So therefore, the equation becomes average pressure is equal to the density times gravity times the average height, which we'll label as x. Now let's look at an example. A cylindrical tank is filled with water to a height of 5 meters. If the density of water is 1000 kilograms per meter cubed and the acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared, calculate the hydrostatic pressure at the bottom of the tank and the average hydrostatic pressure. So we can start by writing down our equations. So hydrostatic pressure equals rho g h. And plugging in these values, that's 1000 times 9.8 times the height of oh, this. That gives us a value of 49,000. The unit would be newtons per meter squared. Next, we can work out the average pressure, which is equal to rho g x. So that, if you remember, 
x is h over 2. And we've already worked out our value from before. So we can divide that value by 2. So that's equal to 49,000 divided by 2, which is equal to 24,500 newtons per meter. Next, we can look at hydrostatic thrust. Hydrostatic thrust is equal to the density times gravity times area times average height. And the short form is F equals rho g a x, where F is hydrostatic thrust and rho is density, g is gravity, a is area, and x is average height. So where does this come from? Where does it link? If you remember in the previous lesson, when we looked at pressure, we know that pressure equals force divided by area. So if you rearrange this equation for force, you can say force equals pressure times area. And we know the equation from before for hydrostatic pressure. We can write that as rho g and x for average height. And that's going to be multiplied by area now. And that's where we get this equation. Remember, force is measured in newtons. Density is measured in kilograms per meter cubed and gravity is measured in newtons per kilogram area is meters squared and x is meters now let's look at an example what is the hydrostatic force exerted on a rectangular dam that is 20 meters wide 10 meters tall and is submerged in water to a depth of 15 meters the density of water is 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. We can start by writing down the equation F equals rho g a x. We know the density of water is 1,000. We know gravity is 9.8. And the area, it gives you the width and the height. So the area is something we need to calculate. So that's 20 meters times 10 meters which gives us 200 meters squared. So we can plug that into the equation for area times 200. And it has a height of 10 meters. So if you remember x, you need to work out, which is height over 2. That's 10 divided by 2, which equals 5. So you can find this by 5. And this gives us a value of 9.8 times 10 to the power of 6 newtons. The average pressure on a submerged vertical surface will act on its centroid. What is a centroid? A centroid is a average position of all the points in the shape. For example, if we take a simple square, and we draw the lines across from corner to corner. You can see where these lines meet is the average position. And this is going to be a height of this shape. It's going to be h over 2, this position. And that's what we looked at for our average position. So we looked at simple examples. Now, if we have something more complex than the centroid, is going to be different and we would have to use that in place of our x value so in the case of center of pressure of this shape okay the centroid gives us a height of two over three times the height so we will need to replace the equation pressure average equals rho g x and so x can depend upon the shape, the geometrical shape. So it could be h over 2. If it is this shape, a square, like so, or a rectangle, and it would be 2 over 3 h, if it is a triangle, like so. Now pause the video here and attempt this exam question. <music> A specially designed storage tank is divided into two parts. Part A has a height of one meter and is two meters wide, and B has a height of two meters and is two meters wide. 
Section A contains a liquid of density 800 kg per meter cubed, and section B contains a liquid with density 1000 kg per meter cubed. Calculate the hydrostatic thrust. First thing we should do is identify the parameters. So density of A is equal to 800, and for B, it is 1000. The next thing we can know is the height of A, which is 1, and the height of B, which is 2. Now, since we're looking at a re rectangle, we can take the average position um, to be uh, height divided by 2. So we can say our x value is equal to 1 over 2, and it's for A. And for B, that is 2 divided by 2, which is 1. So now we can calculate the hydrostatic thrust from A acting towards B, which can be calculated using the equation F equals rho, which is 800, times G, which is 9.8, times the area. So that's another thing we need to calculate. So the area of A is equal to the height times the width, so that is 2 uh, meters squared. And for B, the area of B equals height of 2 times 2, so it's 4 meters squared. So coming back to calculate the hydrostatic thrust, it's 800 times 9.8 times the area, which is 2, times the x value, which is a half. And this gives us a value of 7,840 newtons. Now we can do the same thing for B. And we can calculate the hydrostatic thrust due to storage tank B. So we have the equation force equals rho G x, and we know rho is 1,000, G is 9.8, and don't forget times by a, which is 4, and the x value is 1. And working it out gives us a value of 39,200 newtons. So we have two forces acting upon each other, one from A and one from B. So therefore, the overall force we can work out, resultant force is equal to the sum of the forces. So that's equal to 7, 8, 4, 0 newtons. Take away 39,200 newtons. And that gives us a value of negative 31,360 newtons. Okay. Uh, important to note here is that the negative sign represents the direction. So since we are considering right to be positive and left to be negative, therefore we will get a negative value here because the force from the right is bigger and it's pushing towards the left. So therefore you're going to have a negative value. And that's the end of the lesson. If you would like to boost your grades, try the quiz questions at btechrevision.com. See you next lesson.